currently, there's still been some debate about whether we can achieve general artificial intelligence by using current architectures. Current architectures are LLMs based on transformer models. So this question, whether we can get to AGI, people will doubt it. People are saying like, oh, we cannot get to AGI because they are just memorizing. They're like stochastic parrots. They're just repeating whatever they heard online. And it's hard to argue against this because they've seen so much data that any kind of test you throw at them will be probably in distribution, meaning they've already seen the data before or the problem before or something that's so similar to it, they can kind of like interpolate. So it might not be the kind of complex reasoning we are expecting to become generally intelligent. Like we want something that's generally intelligent, AGI. So that's the one part of the recipe that's missing. It's not generally intelligent yet. So if this is the main argument that they are not capable of extracting general intelligence from data, then we will not reach AGI because memorization will not be AGI. There will be always tasks that are not going to be able to be solved through memorization like research. Now, and here's the thing, this new paper that came out, it showed something that really stood out to me. And the reason why I think it's, it stands out so much is because to me, at least this shows that large language models are capable of extracting general intelligence from data, meaning they get some kind of intelligence from it that is not memorization and they can use other problems. And that is general intelligence. And I'll just go to the paper real quick. So basically what it is about is they took a GPT-2 model and they trained it on automata data. Automatas are like little cellular machines and you can specify a couple simple rules for them and then let them play out over time. So these automatas start interacting with each other and GPT can look at it and they can start to predict the automata, start to predict the next move of the automata. And the thing is, even though they're, they're based on simple rules, their behavior is very complex. And the paper finds that when the complexity is very low, so they're kind of static, it doesn't le really learn a lot because GPT has to predict. When it is not doing anything, it cannot predict anything, so it cannot learn anything. That makes sense, right? But when the complexity is too high, it's too chaotic. Like the automata are just all over the place. And it's also hard to predict anything in such a chaotic environment too. So what they find is we need something in between. Complexity at the edge of chaos. That's why it's called the edge of chaos, this paper. Now, this is interesting in and of itself, but this is not why I mentioned this paper. The reason why I mentioned this paper is because they also tested the models after training it on automated data, on reasoning tasks and chess, and it became better at it from looking at automata and specifically looking at mediumly complex automata on the edge of chaos. So why is this so important? Well, automata is not related to chess and automata is not related to reasoning. If all the models did was memorize, it would not be possible for them to be better at chess. What will memorizing automata states help them with solving chess? Why would it help them with reasoning tasks. The whole point of memorization is that it helps them only with that specific task or maybe something that's very close to it. But right now it does not seem that they are memorizing. They are actually gaining some kind of general intelligence from looking at all the meta and are able to use that intelligence on different systems. They're able to use that intelligence on chess. They're using it on reasoning. And that is key because this whole argument about GPT models and transformer models not being able to generalize just goes out of the window. We just showed that they are not solely dependent on memorization by this fact. And what does this mean? Well, there are still counter arguments to why these models will not reach AGI, like the ARC AGI challenge. And with the ARC AGI challenge, the model really does not perform very well. And if they did reason, if they did generalize, we would expect them to be performing better, but they are performing very bad. And ARC AGI is made to be non-memorizable. It's made to be impossible to memorize. So the fact that they fail so badly at this would be indicative that they are not good at reasoning or that they're too dependent on reasoning. 
And I do not dispute this fact. It might seem in contrast with what I said previously, but they are too dependent on reasoning. But they are not limited to reason. They are too dependent on memorization. But they are not limited on memorization only. They can extract general intelligence. And whether they will is another question. And I think there are reasons to believe that right now they are memorizing more than that they are generalizing. And the reason for that is that they are basically trained on so much data and they have comparatively very small brains. Like if you express it in parameter size and compare it to parameters of animals' brains, it has a similar brain of that of a mouse. So you have this thing with the brain of a mouse, but it's seen so much data. What is it going to do to solve its problem, to solve predicting the next word? Well, it's not hard to see. It's just going to memorize. Because memorization is easier to do for these models than reasoning. Memorization is just a lot cheaper. It's easier to memorize something and predict the next word correctly than it is to reason. So that's why they just prefer to memorize. But it is not that they're limited to it. We can make them generalize. We can force them to reason, and that's what they're doing with O1 right now. They're using reinforcement learning to force these models to reason. So that's one way. Now, I don't think you need to specifically force these models to reason. I believe that you can let these models grow over time, let them grow in parameter size, which will take about four years before they get to the same size of a human brain. And once they get to the same size of a human brain, they will not be limited by their brain size in solving problems. At least we will have that. And if we let them compute for long enough, if we let them train for long enough, they will start to increase in their performance. It's been shown by the scaling law. And once it gets to like 90%, 92, 93, they cannot get to 100% performance on all benchmarks unless they start to generalize. So maybe memorization at first will help them a lot because they have a lot of data and not a lot of parameters. And they don't have to reason because they can still improve with just memorization alone. At some point, they have to reason to improve their metrics. And I believe that eventually they will because this paper shows that they can. And that what we need for AGI might not be anything different than we have right now. It might be the same system applied to new data, applied to new levels of parameters. And that will result in a system that's capable of intelligence. The only thing that's distinguishing us from them right now is that we can reason and we can generalize and we can understand things deeply. And that deep understanding leads us to new discoveries. And if they just memorize, we will always have that one up ahead of them. But if they do generalize and they do understand deeply in a way that lets them solve novel problems, then we have nothing that distinguishes us. And I think that is maybe not as unlikely given the results from this paper.